being able to have an app to track everything and then you see, oh my gosh, man, the baby is spending nine to 10 hours a day. Yeah, near me. You know, breastfeeding. And that doesn't yeah. even mean it, you know, at the beginning stages, that doesn't even mean all the other times you may be holding him. Yeah. So as the man, you're not, there's no, I'm not bottle feeding him. I'm not doing anything. I'm just changing some diapers, you know, and doing mm -hmm. those things. So it never really computes, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're never going to win that. Mm -hmm. So I think you still got to try to find your own balance uh, inside of your new normal. Hey, everyone. I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With The Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Journey Podcast with Morgan Devon. It is I, Morgan Devon. <laughs> we are doing a very special edition of the podcast today mm -hmm. because I am joined by my lovely partner in crime and my son, Langston. Langston, welcome to the podcast. Say hi to the people. Fair enough, my son. <laughs> in today's episode, we're going to talk about the ups and downs of being in a two-parent entrepreneurship household. Mm -hmm. Many of you may know this, Josh has an incredible production company. Of course, I'm the CEO of Blavity and um, we have a lot going on at any given point. Over the last 10 months, really over a year since we had been planning to have a child, we had been thinking about all the implications and trying to do our best to manage proactively the ups and downs of both being entrepreneurs and trying to balance raising a human and bringing a human into this world. And so today's episode is all about some of the things that we have done well, some of the things that um, we haven't done well, and also just tips and advice to other people who may be navigating both parents being self-employed um, and some of the things that you might want to think about as you embark on your own journey towards being a parent, and being an entrepreneur. So let's get into it. So Josh, mm -hmm. how's it going? I mean, every day is a new day. Every day is a new day. Definitely an adjustment, you know? I think everything that you think life will be like uh, with the baby versus how life actually turns out has its ups and downs. Definitely. Especially with two entrepreneurs working from home. Oh man, yeah, I didn't work from home. I think that's the key. I actually think that's been helpful. I mean, I guess it just depends. Like I was thinking that our business was gonna be able to slow down and I wasn't gonna be as needed. And then turns out there was more things that were needed from me, right? Yeah. So did you take a paternity leave? I did not. How does that make you feel? Uh, I mean, it's tough. You know, there's moments that you don't want to miss, obviously. Do you feel like you've missed moments? No, I don't I don't feel like I miss moments, but I'm saying like you think that there's moments that you don't want to miss, mm -hmm. right? But then you also know that you've got people who depend on you. Mm. Right? So it's a fine balance of being there for you, being there for the baby, but then also knowing that there's other people that your decisions and your ability to make the right decisions and be available actually matter to them. Yeah. Okay. And what, I mean, did you, like, what were you expecting? Like, how did you plan for your paternity leave? Did you really plan? I don't know. I yeah. was, like, so focused on getting through labor. Man, labor. I think I looked at historically during the fall, we're a lot slower. Mm. So I automatically thought, hey, all the products that we've got are pretty much in post-production. Everything will be fine. But then there was new clients, you know, new projects, new things. I didn't anticipate how much time the work that we shot in Kano, Nigeria would take. You know, so it was just all these little things that, you know, add up mm. on top of your child schedule is not dependent upon anything on the calendar. So you could plan it out all day long and you could think that I have a window of time and then it's not a window of time anymore. How have you managed your schedule? Uh, well, I have an incredible project manager and I feel like an executive assistant is how I would call her. 
who keeps my schedule pretty much managed. You feel like that's working? I think so. I don't think it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I, think I think it's been it. hard. Um, for me, I was definitely planning on being offline a little bit more. And I wouldn't even say that we've had too many fires. It's a tough uh, economy. Mm -hmm. So there's a few decisions and a few things that have come up that I want to make sure we handle the right way, given that the economy is bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just have to be really careful with our cash flow and everything because the specifically on the media side, the ad market is down. Mm -hmm. um, and that, in, that impacts our publishers and our ad network that impacts um, the different teams that are tied to revenue for this, like our sales team. And you gotta make decisions, you know, you gotta mm -hmm. make decisions and you gotta keep people motivated through a time of year where people really are trying to check out. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I've taken a couple more calls than I wanted to. And then I think from a Matt Leaf perspective, being an entrepreneur, there's also all the external people. So like I haven't posted on LinkedIn. I didn't even post on LinkedIn that I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So there's like a huge cohort of people in my professional network that just have no idea mm -hmm. that I'm on Matt Leaf or that I've, you know, been in and out of the office a little bit. and. Um, I think that's been interesting. Like people like have reached out about mm -hmm. going places or speaking places mm -hmm. or even wanting to have a quick call, like potential partnerships. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to say no or say, hey, can we do this in like three months right. to the president of a major corporation or the CEO yeah. of a Fortune 500 company mm -hmm. who wants to work with us but wants to have a call first. And I'm like, mm -hmm. So how's your February looking? You know, you just don't want to, you work so hard to have those opportunities come your way. Yeah. <laughs> then to say, actually, can we push that back? <laughs> you know? So there's been a couple calls that I have said yes to. And even when I'm prepping for those calls, I'm like, man, I really should have said no to this because my head's not in the game. Mm -hmm. Like I just got done. He's crying. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to pass him off from me to you, to you, to the nanny, nanny to my mom. Like mm -hmm. it's too much. I'm not a hundred percent focused because he's just so physically dependent on me right now. Yeah. You know, like if he was not on me physically in this moment, he would be crying. Right now. Yeah. He'd be crying. Yeah. But he's asleep. So he's good for now. He would not be asleep <laughs> if he was not on me. <laughs> so, for yeah. now. I would say it definitely has. When you put it from that perspective, I mean, you know me, I err on the side of pure optimism all the time and positivity. Yes. So you're right. There has been more challenges that I think you did not expect or I did not expect. Yeah. Which does make your life feel like it's in chaos. Yes. Josh has a bit of a tendency of being toxic positivity occasionally. Yeah, I would agree. I love him so much, but I can say that. Yeah. Where I'm like, Everything is not fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is not normal. This is That's not true. fine. Our lives are dysfunctional. That's true. I mean, you just spent two hours cleaning the living room so we could just record this. That's true. That would never happen, have happened pre-baby. That's true. You know? I mean, it's an off day for our support staff. <laughs> it don't matter. It don't so matter. There's nobody here to do it. <laughs> it don't matter. Yeah, it's just us. It's just it's all us. Weekend. Exactly. The struggle is real. So, yes. But we're here. Yeah. And I wouldn't trade for anything. No, I wouldn't trade it. I love our chaos. I love our chaos, Langston. Um, okay, so what advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are embarking on this journey of growing their family? Mm -hmm. what, what would you have done differently? Mm -hmm. I think I would have done a better job of planning. For? For paternity leave, not just because I wasn't thinking that, oh, it's fine. Like, I'm not going to be needed as much, you know? Mm. So you were thinking, or I was thinking, oh, I can have, when I first went into thinking about this whole plan, mm -hmm. I was like, I can have a meeting the top of the week and everything's fine. Mm. And now I feel like I still meet every single day in the normal cadence. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm doing less work, but I'm still meeting. And then that takes time. So even prepping for meetings or you're thinking about, well, we're having end of the year meetings with all of your clients. You're mm -hmm. re-upping, you know, you're negotiating more money, bigger deals. Well, that still requires time and mental capacity. Yeah. But it's, but the thing, the, the factor that you did not consider, or I did not consider, was being sleep deprived. Ooh, we tell me about the you sleep deprivation, honey. So mm. as a as an entrepreneur who 
your livelihood is dependent upon your decisions. It's not like you're you're collecting a payment from someone else where you could just be like, whatever, right? The challenge has been if you can't get enough sleep at night and then you expect to wake up and do your normal thing, it's almost impossible. No, it's absolutely impossible to be at peak performance when you're sleep deprived. Like scientifically, chronic sleep deprivation makes you make worse decisions, you know, less resilient, more reactive, right. more forgetful, you know? Right. And again, right. I think the challenge is when you are working for somebody else, you know, you kind of chalk it up to the game. It's like, whatever, like they know what they're getting. You're mm -hmm. on paternity leave or mat leave. Mm -hmm. Like, what can you expect? You know, but when it's you, like there's been times when I've had to have, I've been reading emails or I'm reading Slack messages from like just catching up on stuff. And I will literally have to say to myself, you do not actually have the mental intelligence and capacity in this very moment to process this information mm -hmm. and respond. Do not To make the respond. right decision. Yeah. Do not respond, do not right respond, call. do not respond. Right. Yeah. Like, do not, because you'll yeah. look back in two weeks, read back on emails that you say, people mm -hmm. will be like, oh, no, you said that. I'm like, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, I said it. And so I've been sleep deprived before in the earlier days of blavity, and I know right. that that is my weakness. Yeah, I think it's just, I may, may rephrase it and say, hmm. as a entrepreneur who is the decision maker for their business, mm -hmm. that's where it becomes a challenge. So it's not anything about, the money, mm. it's literally about making the right calls, mm -hmm. you know, that you know actually will have an impact on the business. And some of those calls that you thought that you didn't have to make, or it could be delayed, mm -hmm. don't always work as you think. I think the biggest advice in hindsight, because I didn't do this, <laughs> to oh. create a delegation tree so that if this, then this, so that you're able to step away from the business and know that everything will be run smooth because you put a plan in place uh, to ensure checks and balances inside of your company, mm. right? Yeah, so I think there's so many precious moments that as a father who works from home, you don't wanna miss. Mm. It can be very challenging if you don't have a true plan in place because as men, I feel yeah. like we automatically think, oh, it's fine. I went into this thinking, I could still do one day a week, maybe two days a week. Right. And everything will be And everything will be cool. I completely agree. I also was surprised at how insensitive people are. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there were a lot of people, even though I hadn't posted on LinkedIn, there's a lot of people, of course, on Instagram and people listening to the podcast that knew I was pregnant or giving birth. You know, people didn't know the exact date range, but I'm like, you know, it's coming or mm -hmm. it's happened. And the amount of requests I still got via text message for things where I'm like, oh, you think your fire is bigger than me being in labor right now? Or you think your fire is bigger than me only having three hours of sleep right now? Mm -hmm. You know, dealing with a newborn or mm -hmm. we wound up in the hospital for a few days because we thought something was was wrong with baby boo. He was fine, but you know, new, new parent energy. <laughs> <She's right. laughs> and, you know, people asking all types of stuff for us, all types of stuff. And in my head, I'm like, we are literally in the hospital fighting for our lives right now. Like, and you want to ask me about a free ticket to offer tech? Like, you could have asked me for this in the last year, four months, five weeks ago. Like, mm -hmm. it it was um, really interesting to just see the, that level of insensitivity. And even clients, you know, you're smiling because you can't say what you want to say. But even clients, you know, like, hello. So I would say for anybody listening in, I know that people having children is something that happens all the time. But if you're having a child and you're starting a family, in that moment, it is your everything. Right. So even though there's a million and one people going through this exact experience at the exact same time, and so many of you all have done this, and everything we experience is generally normal, sleep deprivation and mm -hmm. being tired and <laughs> fighting with each other and this, that, and the third, in the moment... It doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel like an everyday shared experience. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> feels like we're fighting for our lives. It doesn't. Okay. It does. So just have some empathy for the new parents. Have some empathy. And that's just the CEOs. Yeah. But I would say, <laughs> even as a parent or a CEO, business owner, whatever, I think you got to try to figure out your routine and keep as close to a routine as you can. 
I think, I think that's that was a different biggest, man. Well, that was the biggest challenge I think for us too, is like, I like to go to the gym, you know, like that's my thing. Yes. And then when you're not able to do some of the things that you would normally do. Yes. It just, and then you're tired, <laughs> you're not sleeping. And then it just seems like every single thing irritates you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's tough. But again, wouldn't trade it. <laughs> okay, so in terms of things we would do differently then, just to summarize. In terms of things we would do differently, one, we would anticipate the things that were solely dependent on us as decision makers mm -hmm. and create a decision-making tree for those who are working and also potentially make proactive hires. Hires, yes. You know, if you're a smaller company, because I think in Josh's case, like you said, yeah. you got, there are certain things that only you could do. Yeah. And there's no, what are you going to do? You're not going to not deliver your client stuff. Yes. And then I think for, for women, for female business owners, there's a whole nother layer of, uh, of hormonal adjustments that happen, ups and downs after you give birth and then also for breastfeeding. And I actually anticipated that and I actually tried to warn people around me. Like I remember texting my parents at one point and Josh and being like, FYI, my milk is coming in and I am a mess. You know, like I am feeling mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So, and even though trying to give people heads up that that's what's happening, I don't think it made it any less triggering, triggering. for the people around me when I was acting out of my ordinary, let's call it that. Yeah. I would agree. You know? Um, okay. So you have to be aware of just the physical implications that are completely biologically normal, but how that might mean that you probably should, you know, stay to yourself and the people who love you, not necessarily interact with your employees because, mm -hmm. you know, the fuse was short. Right. The patience was thin. Right. And I can't imagine going back and forth with somebody. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That would not have been a good look for me. Absolutely. It would not have been a good look for me as the leader of a company. Um, I'm through most of the hormonal adjustments for now. I'm sure there's another wave coming soon. But, and then what other, any other pieces of advice? As a breastfeeding person, I think your schedule, it is impossible to hold a schedule. So I don't recommend trying to have a schedule because then when it's off, then you've, you've potentially set yourself up for disappointment. And so if you have no schedule, then you have no expectations and that allows for more fluidity and less anxiety. Instead, how I've managed it is I have goals that I want to accomplish throughout the day, like by the end of the day, mm -hmm. whether it is in the morning, at night, and I have a set of intentions that I have. So like something as simple as drink more water today, mm -hmm. you know, or um, like I started wearing my Apple Watch again, you know, just track your steps, like, don't worry about going on a walk if you're going to make it out the house or watching the YouTube workout video. Just start small, mm -hmm. you know. Um, or every morning I do wake up and put on a little bit of makeup and brush my hair and get ready for the day even though I'm staying at home mm -hmm. because that helps me feel like I have there's a difference between night and day. day. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I agree. Um, so trying to just those little, little, little things – have helped me stay centered. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then lastly, I would say just staying connected to your friends and the people in your life that care about you. And like I've had a lot of phone calls, just text messages, mm -hmm. just reconnecting with people and not always just talking about baby. I think just to have a sense of self and that's been really helpful. Yeah. I would say if, again, if you're the work from home person, I think this, to me, a lot of this stuff really applies to Two entrepreneurs that work from home. I feel like if you are, if you're a father and you go out to work, it's a little bit different. You have way more ownership you way, of your yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, but if you work from, if you're a person who works from home, I think it's what I was saying earlier: is getting back to whatever could be as close to your pre-baby routine as much as possible. So even if that's just incorporating one additional thing, yeah. You know, because you're dealing with well, so Josh many is new an things. Extrovert. You're an extrovert, yeah. honey. So you feel like you're. You I'm feel like, like you're doing. Keep me at home. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> you feel like you're dealing with so many new things. You're dealing yeah. with the hormones of your partner. Yeah. Right. You're dealing with trying to read the newborn tendencies, mm -hmm. and that's changing. You're dealing with because you're not breastfeeding, like because I am not breastfeeding the baby. No matter what I do, 
he's still gonna be, you still hold most of the burden. Mm-hmm. And I, well, I, burden is probably a bad word. You still hold most I'll of the- I'll call resp- it a burden. I you think still it's hold, okay to call it what it is. You still hold most of the responsibility. You yeah. Know? No, it's uh, definitely hard. I don't- Well, don't no, I'm saying until, until we started, tr- well, the app, being able to have an app to track everything and then you see, oh my gosh, man, the baby is spending nine to 10 hours a day. Yeah, near me. You know, breastfeeding. And that doesn't yeah. even mean it, you know, at the beginning stages, that doesn't even mean all the other times you may be holding him. Yeah. So as the man, you're not, there's no, I'm not bottle feeding him. I'm not doing anything. I'm just changing some diapers, you know, and doing mm-hmm. those things. So it never really computes. So I think it's just all the mentality. You know, mm. if you kind of get stuck in the like, I'm doing this and this person is doing this or mm. this person is doing more or I'm doing more, you're never going to win that. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're never going to win that. Mm-hmm. So I think you still got to try to find your own balance uh, inside of your new normal. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be different for every single parent mm-hmm. and every single entrepreneur. How are you feeling about um, when I come back from maternity leave. Yeah, so I think that's probably our biggest challenge um, of thinking through uh, how do we continue to operate both businesses at the levels that we're operating them, take care of the responsibilities that come from the things that we're working on as as a family that require us to travel mm-hmm. a significant amount and we were doing all this pre-baby. We were traveling all the time. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, man, how are we going to work this in with the baby? And then the amount of invitations that we're receiving that it's are quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That are quality invitations to here, to there, for this, for that person, for this thing, that are major things, you know, that that could feel like once in a lifetime to most people. And it's like, well, man, is it possible to even do it? No. You know, for the feeling <laughs> of committing to it, as you said, committing to something and then find out that, oh, man, we can't do it. Yeah, that's one of the things that I, think I that's the problem that's feel challenging. nervous about is like, I just don't want to get in a situation where, you know, I've made a commitment to show up someplace and to be present, whether that's presenting, speaking, hosting. Um, being a partner or sponsor of something for Blavity and then something happens and or I just overestimated my abilities and ability to balance everything and then I have to say I can't go. And I think the reason the reason why that um, I think I probably over have like a fear of it, probably unrealistic, like I probably overweight how much that is worrying me is because people have done that to me a lot. You know, as someone who has a bunch of events Mm -hmm. and not a lot, that's dramatic. Let me be clear. But people have done this to me and the company before where we have an event like Afrotech or Summit 21 or, um, you know, a big thing that we've been prepping for where four or five people are flying into a client meeting in Seattle or DC. And it's, you know, a lot of time and a lot of resources, a lot of prep. And then someone says something has happened that they really could have planned on prior to the meeting Mm -hmm. like they could have been a better planner in my opinion which is me passing judgment I realize that that's why I have to be self-aware and then I'm like well shoot (laughs) we just all spent all this time and energy and it just feels really terrible and I hate to let my team down and I don't want to do that to somebody else you know if Mm -hmm. it's in my control so Mm -hmm. um I'm saying this out loud knowing that and acknowledging that it is probably an outsized thing people are Mm -hmm. very understanding Generally, some people are, some people aren't, but people are generally very understanding if stuff happens and stuff comes up, um, particularly as it relates to family and children. But that's something that I'm worried about. And then I also just don't think that he should be on a plane that much. And I I just really wonder, like, how do people do it? And, And I know that our lives aren't normal. Like, I know that we live a very privileged life and, you know, most people, most women are not on the road two, three times a week. I could be on the road two, three times a week if I said yes to everything. Mm-hmm. Even if I say yes to 10% of it, I will still be on the road two, three times a month. Mm-hmm. And these are not dilly jaddle things. These are all really cool things and things that I've worked really hard to do. Mm-hmm. So 
I don't understand or know how do people do it. Like if you don't have a private jet, if you're not at the Beyonce level where you just take your nannies and your tutors and your all the people on a private jet with you, mm -hmm. how do the people in between the Beyonce's and me get it done? If you are one of those women and you know how to do that, please tell me. One of the things that I've been really grateful for is that I started a private channel on Instagram for mm -hmm. working moms. Are you in that? No. Okay, good. Don't try it. Um, Cause I share a lot. Yeah, that's fine. But I love it because it's a broadcast channel. So people can't talk back, but I can talk out and then they can leave questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I asked a couple questions, like how have you managed, you know, your relationship with your partner and when you've transitioned into being a mom or yeah. how have you managed like one time you weren't home and we had contractors that were going to come to the house and I freaked out. I was yeah. like, whoa, 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 what do we do? You know, I can't karate chop you like I would have without the baby. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt completely vulnerable. So I asked the ladies, I said, what do you guys do when this happens? And got a ton of responses. So I would say for any woman who's listening in is you, whatever your scenario is, even though you may feel like it's unique, there are probably thousands of women who are also uniquely in your exact scenario. Absolutely. And I really felt like I was a unicorn and that I wasn't going to be able to have other people who could give me advice because I had a very unique set of, you know, constraints mm -hmm. and criteria as a CEO of a big company, as a person who doesn't live in a big, on a major coast where it's not like normal to have a bunch of help at the house and things like that. Um, and turns out I was wrong that a lot of people are living the exact same life that I'm living, uh, which was such a breath of fresh air and really helpful to get the advice of these women that I respect and admire so much. And I'm, I am I want more. So for mm -hmm. anyone who hears me and is like, girl, I got you, send me a DM. If you want to join the channel, also send me a DM because it's not linked on my profile. So send, send me a DM and I'll send you a link to join. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like traveling next year is going to be really hard. I want to bring him with me as much as possible, but I also want to be mindful of him not... Hi, pumpkin. You're trying to make your debut? Um, I want to be mindful of... <laughs> him not being on a plane all the time. So we're going to rent a house in LA for about a month mm -hmm. um, and see how that goes mm -hmm. and see if we want to keep just renting houses over longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. And we're going to try our best to, when we have to travel, stay in the time zones for yes. longer than, you know, 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're going to stay in LA for a month, then, you know, if I need to go to San Francisco or San Diego, even if I bring baby or don't bring baby and do a day trip, like at least our home base is all in the same time zone, time zone mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that we're thinking about. I knew he wasn't five. <laughs> See? We're going to have to take a break. No, no, no. Pacifier. He's hungry. Look at him. I know. Yeah, this is tough. I don't know. So this is real. Yeah. We're going to edit part of this out, but we're going to put some of this in because this is really my life, you guys, where you try to do anything. And before, I would just try not to do anything because I'm just like, well, screw it. Like, I'm not going to get it. Well, get to done. be fair, to be fair, what? today is the day that we don't have the nanny. So we would have been able to have help. Well, he still would we... be hungry. Yeah, I know. So I would still would have had to stop. Yeah, but you wouldn't have had to hold it right now. Thanks. Neither here nor there. Thanks for listening to the Journey Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a review and head to our Instagram and YouTube to leave a comment. And look forward to hearing how this podcast has made an impact on your own journey.